good enough, right? How far do you want to come out with it? What's happening, Budget of Builders? Welcome back to the channel. I don't know about y'all, but I'm ready to take this bad machine for a ride. All right, first thing we got to do is that two barrel sucks. I've never had any good luck with these. The rod for the throttle wears out on them. So what we're going to do is we did some shopping in the garage and found a four barrel intake. We're going to slap it on there, throw a carter on top of it, give this thing a little more umph, and hopefully it'll run quite a bit better. Throw a drive shaft in it. We're fixing to run over to Carolina Drive. Fix and run over to Carolina Drive Lines and she'll get our drive shaft shortened. The one that came with the car was about an inch and a half, inch and a quarter, inch and, th yeah, inch and a quarter too short. So we had to get it shortened a little bit and it's fresh. <laughs> My back itches. <clears throat> Lots of good stuff coming. First thing we're going to do is jack this thing up, get the oil drained out of it and change that oil filter so she's fresh and ready to go. Good. Oh yeah, that's good. See, it's good oil. Why don't you... Okay, well you need to take the pan off. Why? Because I just had to punch through a... Oh, it looks good though. That oil looks good. All right, so the sludge to oil ratio is not terrible, but there's a little more sludge than I want to see in there. We definitely will don't want to tear this motor up. So first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and drop this pan just so we can make sure we get that out of there and be sure our screen and everything looks good on that oil pump because we definitely do not want to starve it. So what we'll probably have to do is pull some motor mount bolts up and jack this thing up a little bit. We'll get all the bolts all the way around. They're all 3 eighths, it looks like, potentially 7 16 I'll see you here in a second. We'll grab our impact, ring them all off, drop that pan, clean it out, and get it back up on there. All right, might as well make it easy with an impact. First thing I'm gonna try to do is we'll get it all loose and see if it'll come out of here without having to. It won't. It won't. Motor mount bolts are easy on this one, right? They're just these ones from the bottom. We'll wait to try. Huh? Yep. Oh yeah, and I did forget to mention a lot of y'all in the last video had said, hey, I think I'm talking to the camera. Sorry. <laughs> a lot of y'all mentioned that you were thinking this was not an original 260. The reason that I thought so was it was a 260 car with a two barrel and I don't know, why would you put a 302 in it with another two barrel? But that's what somebody did. So it does have a 1968 302 in it. Which kind of works out for us, I would say, a little bit because it does give us some more power options, a little bit better motor. Obviously, two transmission options. With that original 260, you had that five bolt bell housing. It was a little bit harder to find transmission options and stuff for it, but with this 302, we can pretty much put whatever we want to behind it. Fairly inexpensive, and so that'll be really nice for us here in the future and throwing a cam and timing set and everything in it down the road. Otherwise, you know, realistically, valve covers headers every intake everything's pretty much exactly the same on the cars so we should have no issues with with getting this thing all set up and ready to go but let's go ahead and drop this pan real quick see what we're working with and hopefully we don't have to take the motor mounts out yep it doesn't even barely move at all all right so we are going to take the motor mounts loose and pick the motor up just a little bit and to do so on either side you have these big nuts where are you at over here And we'll take those two loose and get a jack up under the snout here and jack this thing up some. All right, and those are 11 16 on this gal. All right. 
Come out. Right oh my goodness! Alright, if you all remember the 300, you remember that nasty mess. Once again, another motor, we find it. <laughs> we're going to take our shop back, vacuum everything out, put everything back together, and when we're done, We'll probably put a quarter to a kerosene in this thing, maybe some ATF. I had a couple different suggestions, and we'll run it for a few hundred miles, maybe 100 miles, and then we'll change it, and we'll continuously do that, working our way up until hopefully it cleans some of this mess out and doesn't blow the motor up. But that's what we have to work with. We could spend days or go ahead and pull the motor out, but honestly, it's just a 302. I don't think there's any point in going too crazy with this thing. If it goes, we can quite easily replace it with something a little nicer. All right, here's our brand new, slightly very used, cast iron aluminum intake that we're gonna pick up and sling on the top of this motor like it's nothing because it's nice and light without moving any kind of gaskets around or anything. It'll be super easy. You ready? What you got there? Give me a hand. Dad's making a handle. All right. I'm gonna go up in the middle right there. Now you can go all the way up. I gotta go up in here. All right, we're gonna go in a cross pattern, working away from the inside. All right, now we can drop our fresh or rebuilt Carter AFB on there. No, we can't because the coil's in the way. We're gonna have to move the coil, twist it or something. Sorry. That's all good. But it is on there, and it's going to hit right here, or it doesn't actually work. <laughs> Spacer. 
Yep. Okay, we'll just need a carb spacer. So let's get a carb spader. Spader? <laughs> spacer. And then we'll get new studs. We'll go back to it. Woohoo! All right, so we've got our spacer, and the kit did come with both gaskets and new hardware, so that's nice. And we can go ahead and drop this carburetor on and verify everything opens just as it should. Nice and smooth. That's good. We can go to stick our bolts on top. We now have a 302 four barrel and a 64 Comet. This is gonna be fun. Let's get up underneath, throw that oil pump back on and stick the pan on it. All right, so we've got our pan cleaned up and our gasket glopped on there. Honestly, it really wasn't that bad. I just basically had to scoop out the sludge that was in the bottom and all the sides and everything really weren't terrible. And up under here, we did go ahead and stick a new oil pump on. I took the screen and stuck it in the vat and let it clean up so everything looks good under there. Now I'm going to go ahead and stick this pan up, get it bolted in, put some oil in this thing, and get her to run. Why'd that? That was too easy. Something's wrong. Too easy? Yeah. All right, so Dad's going to go ahead and pull the single pot master cylinder off. For the time being, we are going to go ahead and stick one of those back on there just for time's sake. But in the future, we would like to do a front end conversion on this car with disc brakes, and then we'll go dual pot master cylinder with a proportioning valve. But for the time being, we'll go ahead and stick this in here so we can drive this car around. Before we can consider driving this car, first thing we obviously need to do is go and pull all the wheels off and do all the brakes all the way around. We'll go ahead and do a little bit of a time lapse of doing these. If y'all are interested in doing a step, uh, having a step-by-step -step brake job video, let me know and we'll do the step-by-step -step of going through and actually doing these all together. But for now, for time's sake, we're going to go ahead and knock them all out, get them together so we can get on the road with this thing. All right, a pretty cool local car quest. I actually had those pins in stock. They had a lot of really cool older stuff, and 
Um, it's going to be really nice to start working with them here in the near future with a lot of these older parts that we're trying to find. So we're able to get those and we're going to go ahead and get this front stuck back together. Everything else thankfully on the car was all there, obviously other than the rear drums. So once we get this done, we'll bleed the whole system and we'll be good to go. If you do notice, as he does this, we are actually missing the little hook for the self-adjusters to be able to latch back and be able to adjust themselves. So that's something else that we'll have to find. Hopefully that auto parts store will have it. But for now, we're just going to adjust it by hand, which you do anyways. And then I think it'll be all right for the time being just to go around the neighborhood and then we'll slap that in there. Thankfully, all the front end bearings were actually pretty good shape on this car, especially for in the near future, we would probably most likely like to go disc brake up front on this car. You see, he's running that adjuster out to where we have just a slight amount of resistance when we slide it on there. So even if you do have self adjusters, they don't, you know, it takes absolutely forever for those things to adjust. You want to get it out just as close as you possibly can before you actually go for a drive. All right, so one thing we had to do on this car originally had these little drums and this one's actually warped and then the other one has a bad groove in it. And we were worried about trying to find them and thankfully dad had a set laying around. You see the size difference, but the biggest difference on this is this is off of a 68 Mercury Cougar and the biggest difference is actually the fins and you see your upper lip it's only a quarter inch difference as far as your pad height there but because of how it's set up it's actually the same depth and it's the same rear end same axles and everything so this goes right on there the only thing we could potentially change you can go with the wider shoes in the rear which is something we may do in the future but for now goes right on there no problem all right, we're here at Carolina Drive Line today, the highest recommended drive shaft shop in the upstate. Be sure to check them out. They do an incredible job on just about anything you can possibly imagine that involves drive lines. They've gone ahead and taken an inch and a quarter off of our drive shaft, and we're gonna go inside and they're gonna balance it for us. Tractor trailers, dirt tracks, drag racing. Whew. Chrome Molly steel and aluminum. We're getting into carbon fiber now. Awesome. See, I'm just a, I'm just a local mechanic trying to do some YouTube video. <laughs> so I'm not. It mushrooms though. I mean, we, yeah. we ship all over the world. It's kind of dead. All right. First thing he's going to do is take his dial indicator and he's going to check run out on the drive shaft. And you see, he's got one little lip right here where it has the seam on the drive shaft but otherwise looks pretty good there. Alright, so now he's going to check for balance. If you see here, it's out of balance and this machine here, once this light comes on, is going to tell him exactly where to put the weight. Put a weight on there. Nice and smooth. Alright, as you can see there, that Carolina drive line shining like a diamond in a goat's butt, just like the intake and carburetor on this car. But it's what we needed and it's going to work out good for us. As you can see, they do awesome work, quick time, and they're extremely reasonable with what they do. And like I said, they can just about work on anything. I know they do a lot of custom stuff for movie movie productions and, and big equipment and big rigs and all kinds of really cool stuff. So if y'all need anything, any kind of custom work or any kind of modifications to your drive lines, be sure to check them out. I'll throw a link down in the description to their 
to their website and if you need anything just give them a call all right so we've got our four barrel on there we've got our fuel system hooked up you see we have our auxiliary tank again we've got the fuel line ran around to the fuel pump which we have to where we can hook up to the battery our fuel line and we're plumbed into this little carter and i think we're just about ready to fire this thing up see if it'll run see how the oil pressure and everything looks on it and see how it sounds hopefully it'll sound a little better than it did with that two barrel on it and i don't know about y'all but i'm excited to see how this thing does I'm about ready to take it for a darn drive all right now we're ready to see if this thing runs where we can go from there let me go ahead and get the battery hooked up we'll get our fuel pump hooked up the coolant level looks good all right you want to turn it over Remember, this is the carburetor that we just rebuilt on that previous video. We'll see if it runs. Well, that was stinking easy. High five. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap! How's the oil pressure? Shoot ya, 55 psi oil pressure. <laughs> Smooth, quiet, not really quiet. But <laughs> I don't think the video is going to do it justice. This car actually sounds, I mean, just sitting here idr idling sounds really good. Let's give it a couple revs. <laughs> Sounds really good. Not smoking bad or anything, is it? This is what we love about doing this, y'all. This thing's been sitting since 89, and here it is sitting here running. 302, four barrel, you know, fresh oil system and everything. I'm going to check really quick see if this battery's charging. Really? <laughs> yeah! 14 and a half volts. So the bat the generator is actually working on this car. Now honestly we do want to go with an alternator in the future. But hey, we might have a drivable car here. I'm gonna let it warm up a little bit and tune it out some. My voice just cracked really bad. That was kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> We'll let it warm up, we'll tune it out. It does sound a little goofy with one long exhaust, one short exhaust, but we're gonna fix all that. Need to get a breather on it. by that's to be soon burning off a little bit of rat's nest and stuff but it's running no major coolant leaks no major oil leaks or anything we look good let's check our transmission fluid level i don't know if you can even hear me i'm yelling let's check our transmission fluid level and then see if this thing goes into gear drawer part right now you're part all right so the way that he set this thing up apparently at some point in time is completely reverse so what you've got is parks all the way down and then reverse neutral third second first so it's completely backwards let's see if we got reverse well I'm 
nothing. Alright, so we put some more ATF in it. Go ahead and give it a try. Nothing now. Oh, there's reverse. Where's reverse? Try for drive. Or A forward gear. <laughs> there's forward. Alright, it's running. Now we just need to add some more ATF to it. I'm thinking maybe that transmission was empty. And so I'm thinking without that drive shaft in there, it just pumped what y'all were wondering in that first video. You're like, why are you talking about the ATF? Well, without a drive shaft in there, it'll push it out that output shaft. So I'm thinking maybe that's what's happened. He had blown all the ATF out of it. So we've already put three quarts in it. That's what we had laying around the garage. We'll go grab a few more, get it topped off, and then we're going to try to drive this thing. You're going to see if the single drive. At least we'll move in the driveway so we can finish bleeding the brakes.
there it is the 1964 mercury comet with the 302 and the c4 and it's back to life and this thing absolutely rips it sounds great it's blowing a little blue smoke still probably need to go through maybe do a refresh on that engine or at least some valve stem seals but overall this thing is awesome i don't know about y'all but i love bringing these old cars back to life and if y'all enjoy that as well all right they're gonna okay never mind someone's coming <laughs> If y'all want to see this car further come back to life, I'm really thinking we're going to do a little bit of a Cyclone replica, put some chunkers in the rear, maybe a Cyclone hood, go through and just get rid of all the trim, fix this car up and really make it look good. It's already, it's rowdy and it's fun and we absolutely love it. If y'all enjoy this kind of stuff, y'all know this is what we do for fun now. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and notification bell. Peace out. Catch y'all on the flip side.